Welcome to the series of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. Tonight, we are in part four of the 24 part series, this amazing study of God's Word. We are continuing our exciting journey of discovering precious truths from the Word of God, and especially from the two great prophetic books of the last days, Daniel and Revelation. Did God create the devil? Well, many people think so, that God created a devil, and they wonder why. Let us allow the Bible to answer this question. I want to begin with a story found in 2 Samuel chapter 14. Absalom was the handsome, cunning, and ambitious of David's sons. The Bible says, But in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. But this determined young prince wanted more than just the admiration of the people for his stunning appearance. He wanted the power of his father's throne. He wanted to be the king of Israel at any cost. First, Absalom killed his older brother Ammon after Ammon mistreated his sister Tamar. Ammon was David's firstborn son and in line to the throne to be the king of Israel. Then after Absalom wriggled his way back into his father's favor, he began to sow subtle seeds of doubt throughout the kingdom about David's leadership, judgments, and laws, until, the Bible says, he stole the hearts of men of Israel. Yes, the scripture tells us, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel, 2 Samuel 15 and verse 6. Finally, his sinister plan erupted into a full-blown rebellion as Absalom tried to assassinate his own father and kidnap the kingdom. David and his followers were forced to flee Jerusalem. But after a severe battle, a few days later, David was once again secure in his throne, and the handsome Prince Absalom was slain. While riding his mule, his head got caught between the boughs of the oak tree, and he was left hanging there as the mule moved on. A sad story indeed, but this was not the first of such royal feud. In another greater attempt to dethrone a much greater king, we see a tragic rebellion of all time. The kingdom was called heaven, and the rebel was a mighty angel who was like a son to God. He was called the son of the morning in scripture. Let's get to the real story of our study tonight. What was the name of the rebellious prince in heaven and why did he rebel? 
Well, Isaiah tells us, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Isaiah 14 and verse 2. Kindly note, Lucifer was the most powerful and beautiful of God's creation. He was the highest of angels, and he led the choir of heaven. Ezekiel 28, 13 says of him, The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. The pipes here refer to his vocal cords and the voice that proceeded from it. So beautiful. His voice sounded like the sound of the tablets. It is believed by scholars that he was the choir director, praising and adoring God and leading in heavenly worship. Unfortunately, he allowed his beauty and talents that he possessed to fill him with pride. Talking about Lucifer, Isaiah said, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 13 and 14. This is indeed a very mysterious thought for a created being who was so holy and perfect to desire to be like his creator. He did not covet the character of God, which we all need to covet, but he coveted the power and the position of God. Ezekiel joins in to tell us about Lucifer. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of thy brightness. Ezekiel 28 and verse 17. He was the most beautiful angel and most decorated heavenly cherub. Ezekiel 28, 13 says, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Lucifer was the best of God's creation. But, unfortunately, he used his power and position as the most exalted angel for destruction. He was the wisest angel, we are told in Scripture, who stood in the very presence of God and attendant to God's throne. But mysteriously, pride got into him and he used his wisdom for a wrong purpose, for selfish motives. Let's go to our second question. Did God make a devil or a defective angel when he created Lucifer? The Bible says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Ezekiel 28, 15. I want you to note here, God made a perfect angel who of his own free will chose to be a devil. Now, it might be hard to imagine, but if we knew Lucifer before his fall, we would have loved him. We don't know exactly how long, but Lucifer may have joyfully served God for a long time before he began to cherish the seeds of pride and resentment in his heart. The Lord could have made all his creatures like robots, and the problem of sin would not have started. But a robot cannot love. Robot-like creatures cannot render a free service. True love never forces. It gives freedom. Also, true love must be willing to take the risk. That is why even parents decide to have children, even though they know that at some point of time, they may choose to disobey. Love always gives that freedom. For where there is no freedom, that is not love. God allowed Lucifer to carry on his rebellion for several reasons. First, 
to forever settle any question of whether or not God makes us creatures with freedom of choice. Second, if God had destroyed Lucifer as soon as he began spreading doubts about God's love and government, the other intelligent creatures would have forever that lingering questions about God. They would have then served God out of fear and not love. Perfect love, the Bible says, casts out fear. They might have thought perhaps Lucifer was right and God, by destroying him at once, was hushing up the evidence that Lucifer might have had. Therefore, Lucifer was allowed to demonstrate the horrible results of sin. Finally, God does not want his creatures to obey him merely because he will punish them if they don't. He wants us to obey him from principles of love rather than fear. Though we may not fully be able to comprehend what really went through the mind of Lucifer to make the wrong choice, we know from Scripture what his real problem was. Iniquity or sin is called a mystery in the Bible in 2 Thessalonians 2.7. Also, the condescension of Jesus, the Creator coming as a creature, is also called a mystery according to Apostle Paul. The Apostle wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, For without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So we have two mysteries that are opposite, present to us in Scripture. The mystery of sin and the mystery of salvation. In the mystery of sin, a created being wanted to be the creator. And in the mystery of salvation, the creator comes to become a created being. If the first mystery is mysterious, the second mystery of God becoming man to save us is the mystery of all mysteries. Let's proceed to our third question. What finally happened? The Bible tells us there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Revelation 12 verse 7. Lucifer used his God-given powers and gifts to deceive many angels in heaven in rebellion against God and his government. The seed of doubt that started in Lucifer, he sowed the same seeds in the hearts and minds of the angels and he made them take a wrong course. Knowing God's nature as revealed in his dealing with sinful man, we can be absolutely sure God was long-suffering with Lucifer and his angels, and he pleaded with them to repent and turn back to him. But they continued their rebellion, and finally it was so open and volatile a scene that the Bible says there was war in heaven. So war is not an invention of earth. It began in heaven with Lucifer fighting against God and his government. Eventually, Lucifer and the angels who sided with him were expelled from heaven. What powerful beings work under the devil's command. Well, the scripture says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Revelation 12 and verse 4. Now in Revelation 1 and verse 20, we are told that the stars are angels. Satan was so cunning that he was able to deceive one third of the angels in heaven into following him 
in his rebellion against God. Now called devils and demons, these fallen angels carry out Satan's plans. In our story of Absalom, we notice that he likewise did the same dirty works. Absalom ordered his servants to execute his wishes and partner in his crime. What happened after war broke out in heaven? The Bible says he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12 and verse 9. Let me tell you something about the black holes. A black hole is a unique phenomenon in space caused by objects that are so concentrative, massive and dense that their immense gravitational pull does not even allow light to escape. A star with a mass 10 times the mass of the sun would become a black hole if it were compressed to 60 mi or less in diameter. To better understand, if you threw a rock just hard enough to escape our planet's field of gravity, that speed would be called the escape velocity. Now imagine an object with a required escape velocity greater than the velocity of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. Since nothing can go faster than light, nothing could escape the object's gravitational pull. Even a beam of light would be pulled back and would be unable to escape a black hole. The gravitational force is so strong in a black hole that laws of classical physics no longer apply and the astronomers must use Einstein's theory of relativity to explain the behavior of light and matter under such strong gravitational forces. By 1999, astronomers had found only about a dozen potential black holes in our observable universe. You might be wondering, what causes matters to become so concentrated as to produce a black hole? It occurs when a star dies and the core continues to collapse, forming the super mass that will not allow light to escape. The Bible teaches us that when Lucifer fell, he imploded into a fallen star and refuses to allow the light of truth to escape his domain. What methods does Satan use in his work? A. Satan which deceiveth the whole world, Revelation 12 verse 9. That's his job. That's his method to get others to the side of rebellion. He uses deception. He even tried to deceive the Son of God when Jesus came as a man. B. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan, Mark 1 and verse 13. Jesus faced Satan's temptations head on. In the three great temptations Jesus faced, in principle, he faced all the temptations that we must face. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus faced it all. Jesus was depending completely on God his Father and the Holy Spirit through much prayer. He overcame all these powerful temptations on our behalf. Matthew 4 and verse 8 says, Again the devil took him up on an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I want you to imagine this scene. The devil took him up, it says here. Where did he take him? To an exceeding high mountain. This fallen angel literally carried Jesus in his hands. Jesus was famished and hungry. He had no strength to climb the mountain. 
He transported him all the way. I'm sure the angels of God were backing him and flying around lest Satan had the plan of dropping him midair or pushing him off the cliff. And from the top of the mountain, in a panoramic view, he shows Jesus the glories of all the kingdoms of the world. And he tells him that if he just bows down in worship, he will give this entire kingdom to Jesus. Remember, in the holy mountain in heaven, Mount Zion, Satan started his rebellion coveting God's kingdom. And now on another mountain, he's offering the kingdoms of the world to Jesus, trying to lay a trap to him so that he would desire these earthly glories and powers by covetousness. But Jesus resists the strong temptation by depending on the word of God. And he quotes it in his defense. The Bible also says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 14. You know, the devil and his evil angels are still having the power to work miracles. They use their God-given gifts for deception and destruction. Miracle has always been the devil's favorite weapon of deception. He knows we all love miracles. Now, nothing wrong with miracles. God also works great miracles for his people to help them in the time of need. But we need to look beyond the miracle to know who is working behind it. Is it God or Satan? Unfortunately, people do not verify. Therefore, miracles have become the most powerful instrument of Satan in this deception game. The Bible says that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Revelation 13, verse 13. Remember, Elijah brought fire from heaven on earth on Mount Carmel in that grand display to prove that he and his God is the true God and he is the true prophet of God. Satan now uses that, he duplicates that miracle. When he brings fire from heaven, people think that this must be the God of Elijah working. The Bible also says, what else Satan does? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Revelation 12 and verse 10. He first tempts us to sin. Then he accuses us before God and he asks God to judge us and punish us for our sins. He is the biggest fault finder, the accuser number one. What are the other traits of the devil? Jesus said, he was a murderer from the beginning, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8 and verse 44. He loves to kill. God is life, but this is a murderer. He kills people with his lies. Would you like to know God's plan for our broken world as revealed in Bible prophecy? Want practical, trusted solutions for your biggest challenges? Encouraging and enlightening, Amazing Facts Bible Study Guides provide 27 Bible-based topical lessons with beautiful graphics and straightforward answers that are easy to understand. Each study guide leads you toward real, relevant Bible answers for the most important questions in your life. How can I have healthier relationships? When and how will Jesus come again? And so much more. Don't leave your future to chance. Transform your life with truths from the Amazing Facts Bible Study Guides. Available in English, Hindi, Tamil, and Telugu. Don't wait. Order your complete set of study guides today by visiting bookstore.aftv.in. Let's go to question number six. 
When is the devil most dangerous? Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 14, For no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. John R. was probably the worst serial arsonist in U.S. history. Between 1984 and 1991, federal agents believe that John R may have set as many as 2,000 fires in Los Angeles area, in which at least four people died. That makes it more shocking because John R was the fire captain and arson investigator for the Glendale, California Fire Department. John R trained at least 1,200 firefighters and solved many arson investigations, or was eventually caught, convicted, and is currently serving a life sentence in prison. People trusted him to stop the fires when he was actually the one starting them. Sadly, some people also believe God is both a savior and a sadist. They think God is the one responsible for our problems, and then he helps us to solve our problems. But Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why would God the creator bring all this problem to us and cause this problem and then go through such an ordeal of rescuing us through his own son. In the book of Ezekiel, it is written, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why would he die? O house of Israel, Ezekiel 33 and verse 11. God never loves to see even the wicked perishing. God's love is amazing for sinners. He paid the price for them, fully knowing that they would reject that offer of grace. It is the devil who pretends to come to help us, but he is the one, our real enemy number one that wants to destroy us. It is he who masquerades himself as someone good when he is the root of all evil. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Matthew 7 verse 15. Just as the devil did, Absalom pretended to love the people and display an interest in their welfare in order to deceive them. 2 Samuel 15, 5 and 6 says, And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel, the Bible says. Satan is most dangerous when he poses as a spiritual being working inside the church, a wolf pretending to be a sheep. Let's proceed to question number seven. Does Satan know the Bible? In Matthew 5, verses 5 and 6, we read, Then the devil saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. The devil is an expert in quoting and misquoting the Bible for the purpose of deceiving people. And that is why it is essential for God's people to know the scriptures for themselves, to avoid being misled. If we do not study and search the scriptures diligently, we will be swept away 
in the guiles of Satan as he quotes from the word of God out of context and misquotes it to mislead us. Whom on earth does the devil hate the most? The Bible tells us, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. Those who keep God's law, the Ten Commandments, which God wrote with his own fingers, which reflect God's lovely character, Satan hates this people the most. Also those who have, the testimony of Jesus Christ, he hates the most as well. Because God's law and God's Son, they reveal the Father's true character to each one of us. The law of God was given in written form to show us God's character. And Jesus, God's own Son, came in human form to reveal God to humanity. Anyone who embraces both of these, Satan becomes mad and angry with them. Let's go to our next question. Question number nine. What two deadly animals does the Bible use to portray Satan? Peter wrote, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may do or. First Peter 5 and verse 8. And John wrote, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Revelation 12 and verse 9. Both lions and snakes use stealth and diversion to capture their prey. The devil, like these animals, springs suddenly upon his victims, and he is absolutely ruthless. The lion is also the kingly animal and Satan claims the kingdom of this world as his. The serpent is a wise creature. Remember Jesus said, be wise as serpent. The devil is using his craft and his wisdom in a wrong way to harm and to deceive people. Let's go to our question number 10. What is the only way we can resist Satan? James the Apostle wrote, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. We need to remember that Satan is a mighty fallen angel. We are no match to him. The only way to resist and overcome him is through the help of the Lord. When we submit ourselves to the Lord by humility, seeking His presence and help, the Lord will respond positively to us. You know, many people fail while resisting the devil because they have tried to do it in their own strength. They have failed to take the first step as mentioned here. Submit yourselves to God. We are told, once we submit to God, then resist the devil and he will flee from us. He is not just going to walk away. He is going to run for his life in fear. He is going to flee, the scripture says. Yes, when we invite God, God will respond with many steps drawing closer to him. The best ways to draw near to God are through prayer and seeking Him to know Him through His Word. Let's go to our next question. How did Jesus fight the assaults of the devil? In the wilderness, we see the temptation and you see how Jesus handled the temptations. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Matthew 4 and verse 10. For all the three temptations, Jesus completely relied on, It is written, the word of God. Because the word of God is powerful. As powerful as God is. 
Jesus did not say to him, I tell you, Satan, but he quoted the written word to give us an example that we too can conquer temptation and the tempter through the written word of God. Paul wrote, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians 6 and verse 17. The word of God is not only the source of our defense in our war against the evil one, but it is a weapon of offense to attack the enemy. It is called the sword of the spirit because it is bathed with the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the power of the Almighty God, because the Holy Spirit is equal to God. Paul also wrote, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. Our only safety from Satan's clever deceptions are to store the word of God in our minds. And that will keep us from sin. The same tools that Jesus used to fight the devil are needed and it's available to us today. The devil is the same. The principles on which he works out his temptations are the same. And God's word is the same as well. It is the eternal word. The package of temptation might be different, but the commodity of that temptation always remains the same. Let's go to our next question. Question number 12. How will the final fate of Satan resemble that of Absalom? The Bible says, And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood. 2 Samuel 18 and verse 17. Absalom was thrown into a pit, and so will Satan. Also it says, now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and raid up for himself a pillar which is in the king's dale, 2 Samuel 18 and verse 18. About Satan's fate it is written, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit, Isaiah 14 and verse 15. The pit or the bottomless pit is planet earth and that is where Satan will be brought down to. Sheol is a Hebrew word which means grave. Satan will be gone one day into the pit of the grave after the final judgment. We'll go to question number 13. Will Satan ever reappear to tempt God's people? The Bible says, Never shall thou be any more. Ezekiel 28, 19. He will disappear from existence. For the word of God declares, Remember the wages of sin is death. So Satan, who is also a sinner, will die. The root and cause of sin will all be gone. They all will be no more. Prophet Nahum declared, Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Nahum 1 and verse 9. The first time sin entered heaven and it spread on planet earth. But once they are eradicated, the Bible declares affliction or sin will not rise the second time. The reason is why it doesn't crop up again because the redeemed humanity, along with the unfallen worlds and the angels of heaven, they have seen the ugly face of sin and the consequences of it in full display on planet Earth. They know what sin does, and they have seen all of it for 6,000 years. So no one will ever want to disobey God because there is no life and peace outside God and His Word. Let's go to our next question, question 14. How does God feel about the destruction of the wicked? The Bible says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. 
turny, turny from your evil ways, for why will he die? The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11, it hurts God to have to destroy the wicked. In fact, the Bible calls the destruction of the wicked as a strange act because it is foreign to his loving nature. When God brought his judgments in the past, we see what God says about it. In Isaiah 28 and verse 21, it says, For the Lord may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, a strange act. But God must do it because the justice of God, which is a part of his divine nature, demands it. If God doesn't punish sin and sinners who refuse to offer, who refuse the offer of his salvation through his son, then God will be condoning sin, which is contrary to his holy nature. And if God doesn't punish the devil and his evil angels, then the evil people and the presence of them will be a continuous threat to the righteous. So for the good of the universe, God will do this strange act, though it doesn't give him pleasure to see the unrepentant ones perish in the flames of fire. Let's go to our next question, question number 15. How did David respond when he learned that his rebellious son Absalom had been slain? The Bible tells us, And the king was much moved and went up to the chambers over the gate and wept. 2 Samuel 18, 33. If David was moved and if he wept for his rebellious son Absalom, who was trying to kill his own father and take away his throne, how much more will God weep? For he is the real father of all creation. He will weep for all, including Satan, who was once Lucifer, a lovely angel, who decided to rebel against God and his government. God will weep for Satan as he perishes and vanishes in the fires of hell. God will weep for each of those fallen angels who joined in the rebellion as they disappear out of existence because once upon a time they were like his children. They were all holy and loyal. But because of their wrong choice that they have made, they reap what they have sown. God is also going to weep bitterly for all the people of the human family who will be lost. He did everything for their salvation. His son took the sins of the whole world and paid the penalty for the sins of all of them. But they rejected that offer of redemption. They refused God's calling so many times in their lives. Finally, when they burn out in the fires of hell, God will be deeply moved into tears, which reflected in King David's tears. Also, the Bible says about how David reacted to Absalom's death. And as he went, thus he said, O oh my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh Absalom, my son, my son. Yes, David cried for his rebellious son. David wished that he died instead of Absalom. God also would bitterly weep as he sees Lucifer and his angels and the unrepentant humanity perishing. Remember, he did everything for all of us and died for us on Calvary. And people have rejected his offer of grace. As God will be moved to tears, the devil with his hatred right now, his mood to battle and hatredness. The Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but 
a short time. Revelation 12 and verse 12. Very soon, the great controversy will end. The devil's time is all numbered. He is upset and angry because he knows that he is defeated on the cross. He is hell-bent on taking as many people to hell along with him. He will show his wrath on God's children who are planning to go to heaven, the place where he was. He can't digest this fact that redeemed humanity are going to take his place and the place of his fallen angels. But we don't have to fear him, for God is on our side. Let's read what 1 John 4 and verse 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise God. Even if Satan is wroth with us, we don't have to be scared of him. We can overcome him as Christ overcame. Also, we can overcome the devil because Christ still overcomes him from within us. So, if we have Jesus in our hearts, the one outside us is no match for Jesus who is inside us. Will you choose now to love him and serve him? Beloved, he did it all for you. The choice is yours. You have life on one side and death on the other side. Life is to be with God, to embrace his offer of salvation. And death is to reject that offer because there is no life apart from God. God did not create a devil. The devil created himself into that mess. God has not destined any of us to be lost. If anyone is lost, it is because we have chosen. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you accept that offer of salvation that he offers freely to you? Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the freedom of choice. Help us to be wise unto salvation and make the right choice every day. Help us to always be on Jesus' side and be victorious. For if God is for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name, Amen. Trees are beautiful, and isn't it amazing that everything required to make a tree can be found inside a little seed? You know what else is amazing? Inside this little QR code is everything you need to help you grow spiritually. The Amazing Facts India link tree. Just scan it, and you'll be connected to our Bible reading plan, a website, our bookstore, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, ShareChat, and so much more. You're now connected. Scan this little QR code and start growing today. Life. Where did it come from? Did it slowly evolve over time? Amazing Facts India presents, a creationist's view of dinosaurs and the theory of evolution. A new comic book for kids and adults in full color. You'll learn about the origins of cells, mutations, giants, and dinosaurs. You will see that only an all-loving, all-knowing, creator God could have planned all the details of the world we know. Your children are sure to be captivated by the unique drawings and colorful pages. Be sure to get one for your child today. Friends, if you're scared of snakes, this may not be for you. 
I'm here at a reptile park outside of Durban, South Africa, and I'm holding my friend here who's a red-tailed boa. Snakes are found all over the world, and they come in all sizes. Snakes can be found through the trees, they crawl on the ground, they live under the ground, and they swim in the water. Very interesting creatures. Some snakes are venomous, not my friend here, but the black mamba, very poisonous. Matter of fact, their bite is often referred to as the kiss of death. They can grow 15 feet long and can travel up to seven miles an hour. They don't call them black mambas because of the color of their skin, but the interior of their mouth is black. Snakes also come in all sizes, like this boa or a python. They can grow to great sizes. Matter of fact, in South America, they found some fossils of a snake that they call titanoboa. They believe it was as big as 50 feet long and weighed as much as a car. Say cheese. A lot of people are scared of snakes. I used to live in a mountain in a cave and I ran into snakes frequently. They never bothered me unless I was bothering them. In the Bible, the snake is often a symbol of the devil. In reality, it's just a symbol. They're animals like other animals. But it says they were cursed to go upon their belly because they were the first medium that the devil used to tempt Adam and Eve. In the book of Numbers, chapter 21, it tells the story of how when the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, they began to complain about God's manna. And it says, the Lord allowed these fiery serpents to go among the people and many were bitten and the venom was deadly. I should probably mention at this point, that bread they were complaining about is a symbol for the word of God. As many of the people were dying from this plague of serpents, they went unto Moses and they said, what shall we do? God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up, that whoever looked upon the serpent, they would be healed of their venom. This is why it's so important, because Jesus says in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. They needed to look and to live. You see, those ancient shepherds, when they would kill a venomous snake, they would carry it off on their staff and bury it. So a serpent on a pole represented a defeated snake talking about defeating the devil, friends. Have you been bitten by the serpent? We all have. The only cure for the venom of Satan is to look in faith at Jesus. He then defeated the devil. He took the venom of sin in his body to provide the antidote in his blood. So friends, I encourage you to look today and live. Have you ever wondered what it will be like when Christ returns? Well, Amazing Facts has created this beautifully illustrated 50-page magazine that talks about the major themes of his soon return. It talks about the signs of Christ's coming. What is a secret rapture and how can you prepare? It talks about the judgment and the 1,44,000. Who are they? It talks about the millennium and the earth made new. All of this packed into one beautiful magazine you'll enjoy reading and sharing with friends. To order your copy today, please visit bookstore.aftv.in. Can't get enough Amazing Facts Bible study? You don't have to wait until next week to enjoy more truth-filled programming. Visit the Amazing Facts India Media Library at AFTV.in. At AFTV.in, you can enjoy video presentations in multiple languages as well as uplifting material to read, all free of charge, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right from your computer or mobile device. Visit AFTV.in today. One of the most confusing subjects in the world today is what happens when we die. Now you can help your friends and family avoid being tricked by all the deceptions. The Afterlife Mystery is a colorful 32-page magazine that outlines the Bible facts about death, hell, and eternal life in an attractive and contemporary way. Let those you love know the truth about death and the comfort and reassurance they can have today for their future. To get your copy of The Afterlife Mystery, visit bookstore.aftv.in today. Do your kids enjoy fun things? Because I sure do. And I was so excited when my mom and dad got me the Amazing Adventure Kids Bible Guides from Amazing Facts. These lessons are very colorful and are filled with exciting puzzles and questions that make learning fun. They are full of Bible truths and will take your children on 10 amazing adventures. Like slaying the dragon, the only lifeboat, journey through the sea, and whistling through the graveyard. 
I have learned so much. Call our messages now to order the complete set today so your kids can learn some amazing facts from the Bible. When tsunami warnings are ignored, tidal waves can wipe out entire communities. Well, you know, God has given our earth an urgent and final warning called the Three Angels' Messages. And now you can share this last day truth with your friends and family through a brand new Amazing Fact magazine. It's called Earth's Final Warning, The Three Angels of Revelation. This 60-page full-color resource outlines Revelation 14 and God's last message of warning to the world. Earth's final warning is easy to share with everyone. Bring a message of safety and hope to those who need it most. To get your copy of Earth's final warning, visit bookstore.aftv.in today. For more than 50 years, Amazing Facts has been boldly sharing Bible truth around the world in response to Jesus' commission to preach His gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Thank you for your prayers and support.